Welcome back on the third episode of the Switch Mode Power Supply Repair Series. In the previous video we have spoken about the functionality of the standby circuit. Next then we just had a very basic look on the standby circuit electronics and we stopped at the stage that the standby transformer and also the power transformer itself is a kind of inductor and we definitely need to understand the inductor first before we can go into advanced topics like pass width modulation. And this is why in today's video we're gonna focus on simple inductors. Furthermore, we will introduce some simple concepts of the energy transformation inside such an inductor. And in order to show you these energy transformation, we're gonna do some small experiments. When it comes to inductors in a switch mode power supply or any kind of electronic device, they are available in all all kinds of shapes and forms and colors. This one here on the left hand side is a little bit more traditional inductor. However, nowadays, especially in switch mode power supplies, you're gonna find mostly such ring shaped so called toroid inductors. They are inductors just as this one. So this is why they are called a toroid due to the torus shape. And I will show you later what is the advantage of this shape. To make an inductor like this, all what we do is we take a so-called magnetic core. So this is this green ring what you see. This is a somewhat special material. On the core we just wind copper wire and then we have the inductor. After we fully unwind this copper wire, then we are left with this magnetic core and then with the copper wire. When I come close to this copper wire with a fairly strong magnet, it is not being being attracted and that is because this copper is considered to be non-ferromagnetic. However, let us see what happens when this come close to the core. Bam! Crystal clearly this core, in the other hand, it is ferromagnetic, which are being simply called a magnetic core in electronics. In order to understand how does a inductor work in an electronic circuit, we need to introduce some new concepts and these new concepts are a lot easier to visually see in the case of a mechanical spring. Now even though this mechanical spring here is not a electronic component, as I will show you, we can still make some nice experiments on it and the properties what we learn from this simple mechanical spring can be almost directly transferred to a inductor in an electronic circuit. And I think this is the easiest way to show these concepts and theories what apply on a spring also apply on a inductor. Here we have then this mechanical spring at rest and by rest we mean that there is no external force acting on the spring. In this first experiment I'd like to show you the so-called law of energy conservation and energy transformation. So practically what happens is that at the beginning there is no external mechanical force acting on the spring. Now I come in and I'm applying external mechanical force force, which is a form of energy at the end of the day. As you see, when I'm applying this external force and I press down on the spring, the spring being compressed, this means that the external mechanical energy have been transformed into elastic or deformation energy and this is why the spring have been compressed. When I release now this pressure, watch that the spring then pushes back the ballpoint pen and that is because this deformation energy is then being transformed back into external mechanical energy. To explain the previous experiment with a simple graphical form, here then we have the same spring at rest, so there is no external force acting on the spring and then we apply this external mechanical energy, so we press down on the spring. This is what is shown by this green arrow here. Of course, due to this external mechanical energy, we're gonna compress the spring. As you see, it becomes shorter. However, you can notice that from the very moment when we apply this external mechanical energy and we compress the spring a little bit, there is instantaneously a sort of internal type of energy, which is called this elastic or deformation energy, which is then pressing against this external mechanical energy here and this elastic energy is shown with this red arrow and it is highly important to notice 
that this elastic energy is always pointing to the opposite direction compared to the mechanical energy. Another thing what you can notice is that the more we compress the spring with mechanical energy, the higher this elastic energy will be, which is then accumulated inside the spring. Of course, once we release the spring, then all this elastic energy which was accumulated inside this mechanical spring is then being released and we gain back the same amount of energy what we put in here as mechanical energy, we gain it back again as mechanical energy and we are left with zero elastic or deformation energy here inside the spring. Still, please keep in mind that the direction of this mechanical force is always the opposite compared to the original mechanical force what we applied on the spring. After seeing this energy conservation and transformation for the mechanical spring, of course the obvious question is, well, how does this concept apply now for a inductor? To be able to feed in a external electric current, I have attached two wires to the terminals of the inductor as you see. Visualizing electric and magnetic energy is not so easy like it was with the mechanical spring, so what I'm doing, I'm I'm using here a small ferromagnetic screw, which we know it would be attracted by a magnet, and as you see, when there is no external electric current acting on this inductor here, it doesn't interact with the screw, and this is because the inductor is not yet magnetized. After we feed in an electric current into the coil or the inductor, what we will see is the inductor now is the electromagnet, so earlier, remember, it was not magnetized, now clearly you can see that it is magnetized and it is attracting the screw which is ferromagnetic and such electromagnets you can see all over junkyards and such they can lift a full car or if you have watched the breaking bad then they have even shown some extreme applications for the electromagnet now watch what happens when i'm gonna turn off the electric current going through the inductor as you see, the inductor have dropped the screw and that is because it is no longer being magnetized. Normally people say it have been demagnetized. We have seen that once we pump through a external electric current through the inductor, then it becomes a magnet. It is not a permanent magnet because once we remove the external current, it is no longer a magnet. Nevertheless, we still need to discuss how does a magnetic field for a magnet look like. So practically this is the easiest representation. A magnet have a north and a south pole. And then there are these field lines which look like round, almost like a circle, but actually once you go more towards the side they become more and more rounded. Notice this shape. As you see it is always a closed kind of circle like thing. After we have seen the shape of the magnetic field it is a lot easier to understand why we are using these toroid type of inductors in high power switch mode power supplies and that is because as you see there is almost a one to one correspondence between the shape of the toroid and the shape of the magnetic field lines in the case of a magnet. The functionality of this magnetic core itself is to concentrate and to accumulate the magnetic energy which is resulting from this magnetic field. Based on similar considerations, the high power chopper transformer and even the low power standby and all kind of other transformers and inductors are most of the time designed with these magnetic field lines in mind. And this is why the core of a chopper transformer, what you see here, is actually made out of two pieces. Most of the time these are kind of E shaped and then these two E's are pressed together and this would be here one section, one of these E's. Here this one in the middle we cannot see because this is where the windings are and this is the second E. 
Due to this shape, such magnetic cores are highly optimized to serve as magnetic cores inside chopper transformers or any kind of high power transformer or inductor. Let us imagine that here we have the windings as what you have seen in the previous picture. So here there are the windings. So now once we have the windings here and we send an external current through those windings, we know that this portion here will become an electromagnet then these magnetic field lines or the magnetic energy can nicely and efficiently be closed on this section of the E and this is why these type of magnetic cores are used very very frequently in chopper transformers and this is because they provide a very low so-called stray field the stray field is the amount of magnetic field which is not being enclosed inside the core so practically you can imagine that outside this core there are still some magnetic field lines and that is practically most of the time it is then being dissipated as magnetic noise. As I mentioned to you earlier traditional rod type inductors what you see here so this is the core it is only a magnetic rod or a stick and then on top of it we have the copper wire. So these are not used very frequently in high power sections in a switch mode power supply especially not in high frequency applications. So practically when we send here current through, we know that this rod here will become an electromagnet. However, the magnetic field lines are then around this rod. Main thing is that there is a large portion of energy which is then being radiated in form of a magnetic or electromagnetic radiation. So practically such a coil or inductor would behave very much like a antenna. We clearly don't want to have such type of electromagnetic radiation inside our PCB or our device and that is not just because we lose power due to this radiation but also this kind of electromagnetic wave is a type of highly highly penetrating noise which then superimposes itself on the real signal. So let us suppose that this is now a audio amplifier and then this electromagnetic wave would completely destroy Distort the audio signal and this is not what we want to have. However, making such rod type or stick type inductors is considerably cheaper and this is why they are still being used in lower grade electronics or also they might be used as a simple so called choke. The functionality of a choke which is also a type of inductor is to filter out any type of noise and you might ask how can we use now this device since we know it dissipates electromagnetic radiation. Well the trick is that we use it in the low frequency DC side which means that the frequency of this electromagnetic radiation is so low however we still filter out the type of noise what we want to get rid of. We cannot really discuss low and high frequency applications and the advantages of different type of cores without introducing a little bit more advanced concepts like as an example magnetic saturation, hard versus soft magnetic behavior in a magnetic core. We will also need to discuss the concepts then related to the energy transformation and energy conservation in a electronic coil or inductor. Then it is rather easy to see how does an inductor actually performs its duty in a switch mode power supply. These topics and these different new concepts will require me to do a second video. So then please stay tuned for the next video where we gonna go through these concepts and ideas. Many thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments below whether my way of presentation is too slow or too fast or whether I should do things differently in order to make the learning process easier or better on you.